Are you sick and tired of living in a boring little shoebox? Do your neighbors host loud parties on your roof? Is there a crippling fear in your heart that someone, something, is always watching? Hi. Well, that's a thing of the past. I'm Bungie, and welcome to Shoebox TV. The show where we take your stinky little NPC prison and spruce it up to make it look like it's actually worth something. Oh, so you'll be remodeling the place. No, we're filling it with spiders. What? <laughs> uh, hi! As you probably know, Terraria as a game has many things to keep you occupied. A lot of people would say Terraria is known for its bosses and combat, but that would be ignoring a huge chunk of this game's content. This is also a sandbox game, and the majority of items have to do with building. This game gives you a lot of variety in what you can create. I've made some stuff myself, and while they aren't anything crazy, I'm still proud of them. I thought they felt a bit too similar, however, and I wanted to mix things up a bit and try some different styles. So I went to the Terraria wiki and looked at some of the other building materials that were available. And that's how we ended up here! There are a lot of weird furniture sets, and I wanted to talk about a few of them. On the surface, they don't seem too bad. Terraria has a fantasy setting, so who cares if you live in something that's a little out of the ordinary? If you start to think about them harder, though, you realize that these sets are gross, terrifying, and downright unsettling. Living in one of these houses would be an unpleasant experience, and you know it's bad to want to have to put an arachnophobia warning in the first minute! First up, spider furniture. Do you think finding spider nests around every corner of the underground is annoying? No? You want more? Well now you can make one in your very own home! Spider nest blocks are the base tile that you use to craft everything else. They're made out of cobwebs, which are easy to come by, and spider fangs, which are... a little harder to get. This furniture set really shoves its theme right in your face. Everything stands on these spindly legs, and the many heads ensure you that you're always being watched. I think the chandelier is the worst offender. It's just a giant spider hanging from the ceiling. Oh, and if you aren't disturbed enough already, all the light sources are glowing spider eggs. Have fun! Thankfully, you don't have to worry about coming across any live spiders. Though imagine your character waking up one morning and checking their dresser only to have a wave of spiders spill out. I hope you sleep well tonight. There's no telling if you're entirely alone living in this nightmare. If you're fine with living with these creepy crawlies, then yeah, this is the house for you. Cactus is something you can get very early on. All you have to do is head to the desert, chance a few vulture encounters, and bam, you'll be swimming in green. A sane person would make weapons or maybe defensive items out of cactus. That way, the spiky end goes inside the enemy and not inside your home. Ooh, look at me, I'm living inside a giant cactus! No, it's a gimmick. The entire set is itchy and uncomfortable. From what it looks like, your character didn't even bother removing the cactus spines out of most of the furniture. Every time you go to open your chest full of, I don't know, dead rats or something, you'd be stabbing your hands. Remember how every furniture set also has a piano for some reason? Yeah, try playing a song on this thing. And then there's the cactus toilet. Even the game has a unique tooltip calling you out for your questionable decisions. Good luck trying to find anything that cactus furniture looks nice with. This furniture set requires full dedication to the theme, and trying to force something where it doesn't belong tends to make it look like vomit. Hey, if that's your thing, that's totally fine! If you find joy from coming home from a hard day of work, and by work I mean... And then looking over saying, <laughs> my bookcase is a cactus, I won't take that away from you. Staying in the desert, glass is an incredibly versatile tile. Almost any house can benefit from having some windows. It helps brighten up your home by letting in natural light and showing off the beautiful backgrounds. Overall, a very nice addition to any house. But is there such a thing as too much glass? Terraria has you covered with an entire glass set of furniture. Ignoring the fact that somebody throwing a rock at your house would cause the entire thing to shatter... Oh no! This house doesn't seem too bad. There are houses in real life that have chunks of them made out of glass, so what's the issue here? Well yeah, glass isn't too out there. But the more you think about it, the worse it gets. Remember, everything in this house is made out of glass. The walls, ceilings, floors, and furniture. You can see through everything, so good luck having any kind of privacy. Take the glass dresser. A passerby could see all of the clothes and bodies you're hiding in there. The ultimate violation of privacy would be the glass toilet. I don't think I have to explain why. And yes, the toilet is a great way of judging how unpleasant it would be to live in one of these houses. I dubbed this the toilet test, and I hate everything about this bit. Please subscribe or I will find you!
A glass house doesn't cause the physical pain of the cactus house. No. All the pain here is psychological. Welcome to the Silly Balloon House. I don't think there's a better description of this place other than clown hell. Balloon blocks come in three different colors, and you can buy all of them from the party girl. You could stick with just one, or you could try using all three colors. The tooltip for the balloon tiles explain what they all... smell? Like? I guess if you want a bubblegum or enthusiasm scented house, this is for you? I don't think I want to know what they put in these balloons that makes them smell like enthusiasm. But yeah, the balloon house is for those that have an irrational fear of sharp corners and blunt force trauma. Balloons have the same properties as pink slime blocks, so landing on them will cause you to bounce. I'm sure somebody can find a use for that. As for the furniture, all of it is vibrant and squishy. I actually like the aesthetic it's going for here. It stands out compared to a lot of other decorations. If you don't give a damn about subtlety, you can use this to brighten up some of your wackier bills. Also, can I mention how funny it is that you craft most of the furniture at a sawmill? I don't see that going too well. Before we move on to the last abomination of a house, there are a few honorable mentions I want to get out of the way. These include furniture sets that sit right on the border of being awful, but I feel like they didn't include the psychological torment that everything else here does. Honey furniture has to be one of my favorite looking sets. Every piece has a unique design, and it really stands out. However, since everything is made out of solidified honey, I'd imagine things would get quite sticky. The pumpkin set is similar to cactus, but without the worry of getting stabbed every two seconds. That doesn't make it much better, though. Pumpkins aren't meant to last forever, so maybe you'll be able to live here for a while, but eventually, your walls and floors will rot. I had a hard time deciding if slime furniture would make the main list or not. Having an entire house made out of sludge doesn't sound fun, but it doesn't bounce like pink gel, and you condense gel inside what's quite literally called a solidifier, so I hope everything is quite sturdy. And finally, if you're living inside a frigid environment and have never felt the warm embrace of the sun before, ice furniture might not seem like a bad idea. With that said, ice furniture is a disaster waiting to happen. One hot summer day or an unfortunately placed solar pillar will cause your entire home to melt. Last but certainly not least, we have my favorite unconventional house. The entire furniture set that looks normal and comfortable. And nobody was harmed in the making of it. Okay, yeah, it's flesh. I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but it's in the game, so I guess we're just gonna have to deal with it. To get flesh tiles, you'll need a meat grinder that's dropped by corrupt or crimson enemies. From there, crimstone and a flesh cloning vat are required to make the actual furniture items. The flesh set looks vile. The bed has sheets made out of a severed tongue, and the door has a giant eye that stares at you. And don't talk to me about the war crime that is the flesh table. Don't like all of the red gore and guts? That's okay, flesh furniture has a corrupt cousin. Lesion blocks and furniture take the appearance of purple decaying skin, worms, and parasites. Don't you feel warm and fuzzy on the inside? No matter which flavor you prefer, one thing is clear. Flesh is a perfectly acceptable building material. Sure, you can make the tiles out of crimstone, but what's another source of meat? That's right, people. Humans are just sacks of bones and organs, and as long as it can be put through the meat grinder, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. With this reasoning, according to your Terraria character, I'm made out of house. You're made out of house. We're all house, and I need your skin. 